Hello, hello, and we do apologize for the massive delay, but I'm back here, and apparently still joined by Bass. They're both beautiful man, but men, but this is obviously the real Grant. Welcome to NECC, Grant. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. I'm glad that these technical difficulties have been resolved, and we finally have a game to cast here with you, Hyferia. Yeah, finally. It was an absolute nuisance to deal with, but we finally managed to get this going. We finally managed to fix the lag problem. We are actually here. This is happening. Oh my god, it's happening. And we've had a phenomenal start until the technical difficulties. Right, what, what would NECC be with, without that happening for a little bit? And we are so glad for everybody who sticked there in there with us. Uh, we've got a great matchup coming up, though. We've We've got Johnson and Wales, too, so their second team, going up against Dartmouth College in a Division Three US East match. Yeah, we do have that. Just that going on. And we were kind of exchanging a bit of DMs before, looking at the records, and it's not pretty for either of these teams. You know, you look on one side at it, we've got Jonathan and Wales too at one and four in in series, but five and twelve in games. So they got five wins. That's not bad, but obviously you have 12 losses. But you think that's bad. You have to look over at Dartmouth College. They've had it even worse, unfortunately. They haven't won a single series. They've won one game out of 16. They've lost the other 15. It doesn't look pretty. So both of these teams would really like to make some big improvements for those records if they can tonight. Yeah, and obviously it's it's preseason, so it means something. But maybe these teams are, are just swapping this pace around, doing something different. Maybe did a replay analysis that completely fixed every mistake that, we're, that they were going through. So even though it doesn't look as pretty, anything can just change because this is obviously Division 3. It is going to come down to either who can be a lot speedier. So that's what you often see. Players at this rank focus on one type of thing. They either, either play smart and manage to sit back, or they're just incredibly rapid and move around the pay, uh, move around the field at a rapid pace, thus being able to outspeed their opponents and create opportunities and stuff like that. So it's going to be interesting to see which one the players have chosen for. I don't know whether you have a preferred style or something. I personally love them when people are just speedy, though. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't love a good, quick-paced action in Rocket League? Because I know I absolutely love that, and I hope that is what we get to see tonight. But, you know, there's a lot of factors on the table with any rank. And at this one, you know, we could see some flu fluency in terms of speed, but we could also see it kind of crack and crumble. We are at our lowest division in Division 3, so we're not expecting the best, but we're expecting some pretty good stuff to come out of it. And... I'd love to get into it as soon as we can, but I think we are still waiting on one more team. Yeah, a lot of the time of this kind of division slash rank, what players struggle with is consistency. They can hit the ball, mm -hmm. they can go to it relatively fast, but sometimes they miss, which puts them in too bad of a position for their team to recover and, and everything like that. So if, if they can get that consistency going, if they manage to hit the balls, that is going to be an, an incredibly important part of, of their game. And I see you smiling at see Grant is hot, handsome as heck in chat. And you, you very much are, Grant. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it. Who said that? Oh, Ethan, <laughs> you, you're too kind. You flatter me so much. Call back to battle for Indiana. Anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> my goodness. I, I appreciate that a bunch. We got we got all buttoned up and ready to go for the broadcast. No, we're, we're not wearing clothes under this. This wasn't a last minute thing. I don't know what you're talking about. No, but, you know, you're absolutely right when you're talking about players, you know, struggling with consistency. And a huge thing that I always talk about is how useful can you be to your team? Because, you know, you can have a couple people hit the ball, but if the other team, all of them are getting a piece of it every time the ball comes at them, then you're going to suffer if even one of your players is struggling to hit the ball. Everybody has to find a way to be useful. Everybody has to find a way to hit the ball and do so effectively, putting your team in a good position to advance downfield, put more shots on net, pepper it, and score, turning goals and conversions. Yeah, the, the conversion rate is always a massively important part 
in, in Rocket League. If you can continuously be on offense, something that we saw in the previous game as well, they were able to convert at a massive rate as well. But there were also times where we saw them continuously be in that pressure offensive side. And I think we might ha just have a complete go as soon oh. as all the players join up. Oh my word, I'm incredibly excited. It's been a, it's been a while since we've uh, since we've seen some Rocket League. Well, you know what? Let's just tell these players to go. I agree with you. I'm ready to get into this match. I have been waiting for far too long. I skipped a little bit of dinner time to come here to the NECC. We're about to see some incredible things go on about this pitch. We've got. A good one coming at you. We got a fresh clock in game number one. Ant Cola starts things off along with Assassin. He's going to take it off for themselves now. It's Condolent Khan putting it up to their back wall. And, you know, we're not going to see too much go on from either side just yet. Specifically, Dartmouth. And I almost take it back because they've got an incredible save now popped out for Atomic Assassin to try to field, but it's Persils instead, putting it out to the corner. Goes for a demo, succeeds at it, opens up that space. This is super important for a capitalization, but it's not gonna happen just yet. And now it's Wi-Fi who puts it into the hands of the opposing team, taking it out to the other wall. They're grouped up here. I don't like the positioning I'm seeing there. It's probably gonna forfeit possession to JW. Yeah. It, it does forfeit possession. Well, it was something I love in Rocket League as well, or just in gaming in general, is that you can kind of see the ability of the players due to their name, if that makes any sense. So you've got Atomic X Assassin. I don't think that's a name that you would see at RLCS or something like that. And I don't know, it's, it's just a funny thing that you, if you pay attention to, you really start noticing the higher up you get, the more players are trying to actually brand themselves with a with a regular name with a with a more consistent name that they use in everything so they're they're actually recognizable but currently it's still nil nil in this one and they're on both sides trying to figure something out tom against assassin he's sitting far back in the defense but Purcell's catches it in the midfield tries to get that second touch as well this might just drop to the opposing team i think I, I thought there was a player there i thought wi-fi would be there but he's not now with the pinch going to center wi-fi his side flips does not get anything on it Jeez, that was an incredible ceiling pinch. Not something you see every day from this level of skill, but hey, things are getting handled well on the defensive side. And, you know, you're talking about Atomic Assassin. You know, their name may not look like it belongs in RLCS, but it looks like it bites because they've been all across this field for their team. We talk about usefulness. Well, they're doing just that for their team. Again, they get a touch. They fire Ooh. a shot on net. Saved by Wi-Fi out to the wayside, however. Now from the outskirts, they're trying to push back in here. They'll leave it for Persils now, hunting for a demo. Almost got Assassin, but just fielded out by Khan. Now some space to work with, a 3v1 situation. Dangerous here for Johnson Wales. Now it could be an open net opportunity if they can just get it across quick enough. They do, but nobody's won the score. Atomic Assassin couldn't convert, and they'll suffer the consequences. We remain tied up at nothing to nothing. Oh my word, such a phenomenal opportunity, but then the two players start sitting back, and that's kind of that conversion right there. The great opportunity, great opportunity arises oh. here. Will Persils, hello, you don't see that every day. And with a great double touch from Persils, good consistency out of him. Woo, that is spicy for sure. The placement on the wheels to send the amount of power, probably like a, just a slow overall shot. When you put your wheels on the ball, that's going to force a softer touch on it, and it causes it to just find that really sharp angle whereas if you would have tried to bang that with the harder outer shell of your car you're probably going to scrape up that crossbar so well handled there they take the lead one to nothing and now Aunt Cola is looking for an air dribble they get a bump oh, oh no it was on their teammate friendly fire activated but they get <laughs> unharmed two minutes to go now moving the other way is Dartmouth Khan up to Atomic Assassin, nobody there to make the stop. Zach has been demoed by Wi-Fi, and it could have left that open net one more time. The dreaded situation off the back wall one more time. Pinch out from Khan, and I believe it was Zach as well. We're back into Johnson Wales territory, and now they're just fighting for that possession. And there it is again, three men in the same zone, facing the same direction, going the same way. We cannot see that here. It is a huge, just, a glaring reason as to why Dartmouth have not been successful in any of their offensive attempts. They need to get that under control if they're going to see any success.
Yeah, they need to space out a little bit more and just have someone in that center. It seems as if they're they're a little bit too afraid to actually go in. Also, when that ball rolled across the goal at not a rapid pace, it was definitely scorable. They they were off by a little bit too much. They were sitting back and just taking their time a little bit too much. Now Zach has an opportunity. Wi-Fi clears it out, and it seems as if JW it's just a, a little bit quicker around the field. That being said, Dartmouth can definitely outposition them, and that is something that they need to capitalize on. Oh, it's Wi-Fi trying to go down the other end. Seven boost. Oh my word, Wi-Fi does it. Oh my God, himself and Cola gets blocked by Atomic, and Dartmouth managed to hold on to only a one-goal deficit. The solo effort was huge, but it just wasn't enough. Here's Wi-Fi with a great block off the back wall. Assassin sends it in for one more off the crossbar and down. Ant Cola beats out Zach on the attack, but Khan has their hands on the ball this time. 20 seconds to go. They need to score now. Zach's backing off, and they kind of have to. Shadow defense at the failure, and now it's Atomic Assassin one more time from the side wall, moving into the corner territory. No touch on the ball. This could leave it for Wi-Fi. No, a whiff comes out instead. Persil's trying to move it down. Khan with a shot on net, blocked by Ant Cola, and up. Three seconds time has run out here. This ball has to stay up if there's going to be any hope of Dartmouth scoring. This is a good striking opportunity. They pop it up high one more time. Assassin gets oh. it off the post, but it's out. And Cola clears long, and Khan can't get there. It's Assassin keeping it up a little bit longer, and it's spiked down by JW2. And they take the first game just barely. Honestly. Dartmouth, impressive how long they kept that ball up. When they started playing like that, that is something that we need to see throughout the entire game. They showed offensive pressure, they were going at it, they didn't really over-rotate, they didn't allow JW to go on that counter-attack. And that is a form of Dartmouth that we need to continue seeing. We need to see them continue pressing the issue and bringing the game towards JW. We've seen they can do it now, they need to actually bring it into effects as well in the game. Yeah, and I was a little disappointed to see at the end there that no money really jumped up for the ball. It was a huge opportunity. When that ball is in the corner, I wish I had my board out. I wish we had that set up. But, you know, borrow a little trick from one of my casting buddies. But in, in this situation, I'll do my best to describe it. When you're in the corner, right, there's two people pushing on the ball. You have that third man. Great rotational positioning and awareness overall. But it's up there. Zero seconds. Everybody in net is scrambling, right? And instead, they let it come down. They bounce it up and wanted to take a shot. They just didn't make up their mind, but I definitely think we should have seen a bit more aggression and confidence come out at the end there because they just looked a little hesitant and a little shaky, and that has been the story of them throughout that entire game one, so hopefully Dartmouth straightens up that big factor. Be more confident in what you're doing and communicate more. And that could be a part of playing on stream as well, where they're, they're kind of nervous. They, they are now playing in front of an audience. They don't really know well, probably have not played as much in front of an audience as you see at the higher levels. Obviously, then you've got tourneys you competing, and that's the lovely thing about NECC, that people from all scale ranges can compete, and you need to be able to deal with those oh. nerves. Come to like that, he gets the demo. No, actually, he just gets demo, and instead, you try and do something, but it goes against your personals. He's waiting for this opportunity. Condolan, massive shout out to him as well. He's playing from console, which you don't see that much anymore. I guess you could call him consulate con if oh. you will oh. well we'll make those puns all day i'll be here all night <laughs> thank you but man we've got 30 seconds gone by and cola with some incredible control off the dribble they'll be shut down by one of the dartmouth players shot to the upper 90 blocks by wi-fi and con comes in for the second attack that's the confidence we need to see that's how you get a game two started that is lovely, and now starting out a little bit better, was, or start, starting out better just cleanly, and getting that lead against DIW, that's going to become massive for them. They can now build off of that. They've gained, they've gained the confidence. They are going now. Well, oh my word, fake kickoff. I think it was because Conlon was still back in in the goal. Atomic gets me by Am Am. Can he get this double tap somehow? Oh my word, he's incredibly close to it. Bertel popping up the team, then goalie, but Zach still manages to get the save. Now Conlon against Devon on the attack. Well, how was this out of the goal from Jade? Or how did Dartmouth defend this? This is ridiculous. I can't even believe that. Ant Cola just didn't quite find the angle. They were so close, but they were unable to follow through. They still need a goal to tie this game up, but they've got plenty of time to do that. I might be eating my words here as Assassin tried to fire one in quick. 
But Ant Cola again with another stop for their team. Doing really well on defense, but they've got to get back on offense. Assassin, though, with the quickness up top to continue this offensive pressure. Zach finds themselves in the 3v1. Again, it, it is it is one-sided when it comes to these offensive counterattacks. It's two people double committing forward, leaving one back. One demo is all it takes to open up that net, and it's only a matter of time before either team figures it out. And that's something that I would love to see them figure out. Try and go for a little bit more physical plays. You see at the high level, uh, at RLCS level, demos are becoming a play much, much, much more. They're continuously trying to break up that rotation because the rotation at the top level, it's so clean that really the only way you'll be able to break through is with a bump. Well, and team oh. bump happens here. Atomic Assassin, once again, his back personal's overcommitted massively. And now it's Atomic in a 1v1 situation. Wi-Fi, he's on the sidewall in a decent position to defend, but oh. that's a phenomenal pass into the center. Oh. Zach, he doesn't really get the accuracy on the shot, but they're still on offense. If it's a shot from Condon Assassin, that is also saved. But Dartmouth, they are showing a completely different form. And there's so many close attacks, but no conversions. It's painful to see, but I tell you what, defense is all day long is what we're seeing here. It's all about who gets an offensive attack converted to a go. Wi-Fi with a double tap drop down. Didn't find the net, and instead they'll have to live another day and get another opportunity later. And Ant Cola is trying to create that one right now at the two minute mark. They'll fire it back up. Assassin runs in the JW players. Khan with a 50 out to the left side. Purses should get there quick enough and first. They do. Looking for the air dribble carry. The follow through. They don't get there. Double commit almost on defense. Khan keeping their composure for just long enough. Now positions for a pass. Atomic Assassin with the drop over and looking for the finish off the air dribble. They get it through. Why if I couldn't make the stop? Hello. That just happened. Condon and Khan. He did it by himself. Purses with a backflip and that kind of threw of Ant because Ant was waiting for the challenge to happen and the challenge just did seemingly happen. But in the end, well, he backflipped, so there was no challenge. Now it's a two goal lead for Dartmouth. They're coming out strong and not really in the way that they're necessarily creating a lot of opportunities by themselves. They're just holding strong, incredibly strong on that defense until JW either overcommit or just make a mistake. Well, I mean, overcommits are kind of captured in that making a mistake. Oh my word, a boost miss in the corner as well. Condon, can he build something off of defense? Oh, it's a great buff by Purcells, though, to straighten things back out. Wi-Fi not able to get through the defense quite yet of Dartmouth, but Ant Cole looks for the carry. Pinch off the roof there from Purcells again. I'm loving the team participation. We were kind of questioning if either of these teams were going to be able to get involved all three players, and, you know, they've answered that question pretty darn well here. Everybody can get involved in Assassin <laughs> finds a pinch. I... That went too quick for me to even pick out what just happened. It, it, I think it was an own goal from Wi-Fi technically. It's not really a lot oh, you can do. No. It, it could try and approach this from the oh, different God. angle next time but it's also panic you see a shot that's going on or potentially going on and um, oh zach i, I, I kind of want to talk about his role in all this uh, a little bit oh. uh this is unfortunate bad this time is with yeah very bad time <laughs> zach filled the half flip to try and get back to the boost and his wi-fi just scoring the, the seemingly open net unfortunate mm. season but it's 47 seconds left is the comeback happening here I, I don't know. I, I don't think we've seen enough of the offense from Jade W to even even really think about that. You know, it doesn't it doesn't appear as a thought in my head. However, with that demo, I could change my mind. No, I think that was the other team instead. But that, oh no. Okay, comeback could be imminent off the crossbar. Okay, this is J W taking advantage of some defensive miscues, and I'm kind of liking it. I, I'm I'm gonna say the comeback could happen. Oh, for sure now there's 30, 33 seconds left a two to three scoreline only one goal in at dartmouth they're probably scared a little bit now this kickoff has to be decent wi-fi he just completely oh. messes it up so that's going to be a decent kickoff that's going to be possession for dartmouth can they keep this possession though because sun tzu massive shout out to the lad it's best offense or best defense is a good offense and there's a demo zach can he continue this attack he's, he's more of a supporting player which i like as well but last 17 seconds dartmouth needs to hold on for that little bit yeah, we haven't seen much participation from Zach on anything that Assassin and Khan are doing, but it might not matter. They could take this game pretty darn easily here if they can just hold off one more. It's an open net. No one can capitalize. I'm, 
I'm cheesed. I don't even know. I don't know anymore. <laughs> oh my word. Oh my word. That was ridiculous. And he says action not really involved. And, and that is for the reason that he's incredibly supporting to, to his teammates. We saw earlier that he left the boost in the corner. He only had 15 in the tank. He very much could have just said, hey, you know what? That's my boost. I'm taking that boost. But no, he left that to his teammates. He's, he's a great backup player, making sure that his teammates mm -hmm. have the freedom to, to kind of um have the play that they want to make uh, so massive shout out to zach he might not show up at every single play but he comes in massive in in closing this gap the gaps on the defense yeah i saw something on the internet the other day it was like for those of you at the bottom of the scoreboard you are the rock you're the foundation of that team and i kind of feel that because at the times when i would grind solo standard back when that still existed you know, I would play as that support player and I'd always get toxicity direct at me for being on the bottom of the scoreboard with like less than 100 points. But in reality, you're just letting the other two players do whatever they want and holding down the net. You never get that recognition, but Zach really deserves a lot of it here for Dartmouth. Yeah, for sure. And j just in general, all these players, they're they are going at it with full force. And I'm glad that we at least ha don't have a sweep after technical difficulties. The game is not a <laughs> difficulty. And these players are going at it, making this as much of a game as possible. And currently we're in game number three. The winner for this one will be put on match point. Let's see who it can be. Can Dartmouth continue their impressive performance from the previous one? Condon is looking to do exactly that. Persons will make the save, though. I'm glad you mentioned a sweep, by the way, but hold on. We'll get back to that because Khan found a great cleanup off the rebound. Oh my word. Atomic Assassin also with a phenomenal touch to even center that one. And we see the confidence from Dartmouth now. We see that come out. We see them go for those kind of plays. He wasn't scared of, oh, maybe I'm over committing. No, he, was, he, he knew it was his ball and he took what was his. Yeah, he really did. But let me get back to that point about sweeps. That is all that either of these teams have seen. Maybe they've been swept or given a swept. Now the only given a swept, yes. The only <laughs> <Very> team <nice. laughs> the only team who has given that sweep is JW. They got a 3-0. If I'm not mistaken, I'll check my notes here. Mitchell College was their 3-0 victory, but everything else in ever on each of these teams, it's only been sweeps. That's all they know. So thank goodness we're not seeing that here. We're seeing a pretty even match. Heck, I think we could even see a game five at this rate, even though we're at game three. So <laughs> I'm looking forward just to see how everything plays out, how things straighten out and what goes on if we can get some more team participation, especially on JW, more offense is what I'd like to see. We could see things get a little more equal. Yeah, I'm sure their parents will be incredibly glad with them being familiar with sweeps. Helping out in the household is a phenomenal thing. To explain to everyone at home, sweeps are, are basically when a team doesn't or just takes all three games in a row and doesn't drop a game towards their opposing side. Obviously, the score is currently 1-1, so a sweep cannot happen in this one anymore. Now, Kowali tries to go for oh. the shot and equalizes the game just like the series, and this is, well... An equalized score and Dartmouth. There's a little bit of an inconsistency there. Yeah, that's just not the best clear from Atomic Assassin. Certainly not what they wanted to pass it back to the opposing team when you're trying to get it away and trying to defend. Not the best situation to be put in there, but great punishment from JW. That's something they do well at. They don't really create their own opportunities. They let the other team do it for them. They let those mistakes show themselves and they know how to deal out a bit of punishment. That's great to see. Let's see if they can keep it up. We got three minutes and 15 seconds to go. Yeah, only it's a more, more than enough time on the clock for sure. And can Dartmouth, because the, the, the problem with their play style, waiting for the mistake from JW to happen, is maybe at some point JW doesn't make mistakes anymore. What are you going to do then? Are you going to be creating themselves? Are you going to be actually creating the opportunities by yourself? Or, or are you just going to struggle in this matchup entirely? That's something that we're going to have to figure out during these final few moments. Well, currently it's looking as if they're, they're creating chances by themselves as well. Yeah, well, Persils has got an opportunity. They get it over Assassin. They can't find the double. They don't need it. They let it drop for Ant Cola, and they take the lead 2-1. Phenomenal pass, Persils. Uh, that's all he basically needed to do. I'm, I'm sure he's a little bit upset that he didn't actually get the angle. But 
Are you really going to be annoyed about that since, well, it's still a phenomenal goal and it puts your team on the lead in half time here. It is JW who is in the lead and are looking to continue this as well with this attack going on. And that's where Zach can, can kind of be weird to play with when, it, when he sits that far back. If you're not creating the offensive pressure, then it kind of feels as if the rotation is not really going as smoothly as it should be. Yeah, it's weird because you're basically playing a twos match with an extra man is what it feels like, and you kind of struggle to adjust to that. But this is an open out opportunity for JW. Persils couldn't quite set it up, and Cola doesn't have the boost either. Wi-Fi has also been playing that third man role. I think it's a pretty telling sign of both of these teams. And you know, two minutes now, Wi-Fi again, third man in the corner, looking to get that big bang to set them back up on a counter-attacking opportunity. Double whiff in the air, one from each side. And Khan plays it back up to Persils, who waits down below. Atomic Assassin plays it down to Persils. They'll take an advantage for it. Wi-Fi extends it out in the front field. Khan is just there to stop it in the nick of time, and. This is that offensive pressure building once again for JW, something that's been absent for most of the series. And Cola almost found one to the side post, a pass out to midfield from Wi-Fi. And it's already back for Dartmouth to do something with. Khan almost found the punish off the right post and out it goes. Two to one, still the score could tie it here, but instead it goes out again. Another one to the Woodward. I can't even right now. This is going absolutely nuts. This is crazy. The pressure that Dartmouth have gotten. And something that I want to mention as well, the, the pass towards the center from Wi-Fi. I don't know whether you saw how that went, but he basically curled around the ball when the ball was at his belly button and then swept his the rest of his car up and got that center. It looks incredibly ridiculous, and I don't think he did it necessarily on purpose, but nonetheless, the ball went exactly the same. And it's only 30 seconds left for Dartmouth. Excuse me, I'm yawning over here, but that's not something to yawn at when Persils is on the goal line about to strike. It's a pass from Assassin to Khan. They bump their teammate anyway. That scraps that one up. Ten seconds to go. That could have been the last opportunity that we see from Dartmouth as time winds down and Ant Cola secures it. I think that's a game three victory for Johnson and Wales. It's looking like it. I don't think there's any way, especially in 3v3, it has to be a little bit of a clown fiesta, as we like to call it. There's messy things going on, especially with seven seconds left. This kickoff happening, I can't imagine that they'll actually make the comeback, and especially when the kickoff goes the other way. It will be indeed secure for JW. It's uh, It's been a good performance by Dartmouth. They just did not really manage to capitalize on the, on the opportunities that they get. And, that's something that they need to do a lot where they need to capitalize on the on the opportunities because they don't create as much as they jw so on the side of Dartmouth, they've got five opportunities scored one on the side of jw they've scored 11 or they shot 11 times and scored three times so the, the accuracy is just a little bit better on jw with Dartmouth. they need to be able to to be able to capitalize on the right times yeah, and I want to go back to our point that we made before we even got into this series in the first place, inconsistency and consistency. If you've noticed, it's been pretty much one-sided throughout a series. It doesn't matter what goes on during the game, but at the end, you look at the scoreline, it's two goals always separating us in each game. JW takes the first one, they lose the second one, and now they're back to winning again. It's not consistent, and Dartmouth was able to take advantage in game two. Now, hopefully for JW, they want to be able to take this game number four and close out the series right here, right now, but I'm not sure if they can do it because they've just been bouncing back and forth. If they can keep up this offensive pressure and throw shots on net with those 11th they had for this game, then I absolutely believe that they can take game four. But with the inconsistencies we've seen, and because it is a lower division, I've got some questions. I, yeah, I've got those qu same questions arising as well. And I think when if Dartmouth managed to win, it's not really going to be a dominant victory. I don't think they'll be able to dominate their opponents here. 
Especially because they don't have that much offensive pressure. And once they potentially start doing that with Zach trying to come into the rotation a little bit more, being a little bit faster, obviously, well, sometimes that's just the case. And Wi-Fi, he can score those. Oh, no, he just called the Zach with a phenomenal block. And it might not be as quick as offense, but he is a solid rock in defense. Oh, we've been talking about it too, that foundation for Dartmouth. They're doing well right now in the first opening 30 seconds of game number four, but man, they've got to get this offense turned into something special. Khan off the backboard and out Wi-Fi, pushing it over to the other side. This is great, effective touches that are putting it in empty space that allow their team to advance down the field, intercepted by Atomic Assassin and played immediately back out off an incredible passing play from Johnson and Wales. Now it's Purcell's taking advantage, maybe looking for a demo. They'll have to leave this one for Ant Cola, shot on target, but Khan with the stop. Wi-Fi gets their shot blocked by Ant Cola. I don't even know if they know what team they're playing on, but zero to zero, we will go. Dartmouth, get out of that crazy situation unscathed. I always call them showmen. They, they just want to give us a show. Don't take the lead early and continue that train. Give Dartmouth a little bit more of a chance. Now it's Atomic. He might be able to break away. He's on the sidewall. Doesn't really have too much boost, boost in the tank to work with. Zach, he's going for a ridiculous boost deal as well. That forces Conlon and Can to back up. But now Conlon and Can, he's with zero boost. Zach, he's running a little bit of interference in his own team. That's only something you don't want to see happening. That's a little bit awkward on defense from Dartmouth. Can they break out? Can they manage to get it past Zach with a good breakaway? Able to follow that one up until Wi-Fi intercepts and oh. he's able to get it past Atomic Assassin. Oh, no. oh, with that hit, he's cleared three opponents. We come to the Kangas back in time. And Coley's a little bit too far pushed up. And it seems as if Dartmouth will be able to hang on to this side game for a little bit more before. Okay, yeah, for a little bit more. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think, I don't even think Ant Cola was really pushed up that far. It was just a pinch pass off the back wall. You don't really get those that often. It was a bit spicy for them to handle, but the fact of the matter is, is they're back on defense now and they've got to get out. Assassin with the boost grab leaves Zach to fire one up. Ant Cola was able to receive it on their way up the back wall, but it's Khan looking for the double tap, well defended by Wi Fi. Looking to put some style on this one. They don't find the ground pinch to send it across. They need a counterattack now, but that's just a pass to the other team. Cut off by Zach. Everybody's just starting to get in each other's way. They got to breathe. They got to give each other space if they want to find anything because so far, each offensive attack has been blocked by their own team. Yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate when that is the way in Conlon and Khan. We call that laying an egg, waiting for the boost to spawn. Or at least on the EU side of things, we call that laying an egg. I don't know whether uh, y'all uh, NA folks get up to the same thing. Camp well, the boost. Camp the boost, standard things as well. I'm making a little bit of a Call of Duty simulator, hiding hiding <laughs> in a corner and waiting for some <laughs> someone who needs to spawn. Oh, and Cola, can you get that one to the center? He can, but he has 14 boost, so won't be able to get a double tap. Conlon, and it was denying that anyway. Purcell's and JW, they're in a good position now. They're just continuing this pressure. Oh. That's a very good pass towards the center, oh. but once again, nobody there from JW. Darman needs to break out. They're struggling on boost, and they might oh. be able to break out here. What is going on? Well, I can tell you one thing is Khan getting that boost grab is huge, but not so much when they send it towards their own net. They'll escape for now, but Wi-Fi is coming in quick with a push. They miss contact. It's Ant Cola all alone. These 3v1 scenarios proving themselves to be a bit of a challenge, but not so much for Purcells. They'll get a big booming clear out to their teammate, but Khan deflects it to the side. Purcells with the miss. Ant Cola with a backflip, excuse me, I've got hiccups all day. I've got to stop drinking carbonated beverages during streams. It just doesn't work out for me, but there is no hiccup right now in either of these defenses. Still no goals scored, nothing converted. Zach is now playing that third man role, but we got to turn our attention to the front men trying to create this next offensive push. They've been stuck in their half with so much space to work with, but they're not doing anything with it. This is huge though. Wi-Fi fires a shot up high and over the head of Khan with 37 seconds to spare. They take the first lead of game four.
There's so much pressure and eventually you will crack because Wi-Fi, that's just an unstoppable shot. 93 kilometers an hour and somebody needed to challenge that early. It is a one goal lead for JW. They're looking to close out this series in a three to one fashion. Dartmouth, they need to be able to break away. They need to get out of their own half, but once again, they're back in defense. Atomic bumping into Coleman and Can. A little bit too much, too many team bumps oh. happening. Wi-Fi, you might just be able to finish oh. it here. That could be the nail in the coffin after a little bit of a touch on that from Condon and Can as well. And this is just shambles. Oh, there's, it's just, it's so scrappy and it's unlucky as well. I can't remember which Dartmouth player it was, but the fact of the matter is that it was redirected into their own net for an own goal. And this game four, along with the series, could be on its way to closing out as Wi-Fi moves downfield, looks for the double tap. First, though, double commit. We've seen capitalization of mistakes from JW. Maybe we can see it here from Dartmouth. They fire a quick one. They can't find the dunk. They get the demo, though. Out to the other side, 10 seconds, though. I think that opportunity was what they needed to even be in the picture for a comeback. And unfortunately, this series goes to Johnson and Wales. Dartmouth will have to fight another day to win a series. That is how it ends. And unfortunately, they are cut out of the picture. Just as I get with friend with pictures that get, get uh, that I get made with friends, it's unfortunate, but it happens. Sometimes you're just cut out because you don't look as good as the rest of your friends. <laughs> it's something that happens. But still, the JW they were looking great today. They were they were looking phenomenal, getting that that attack going and keeping that continued pressure. And at some point they just they just cracked. Yeah, at, at some point I think we are going to have a player interview after this. I, I don't know Hyperia or I I I I just <laughs> you get what I mean. Listen, I've got Hyperia and I've got a I've got a player Hyperia on it, it it gets foggy up here. All right, but uh, who do you think we should pull in here? Ooh, it's 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 always an incredibly tough one with uh, mm -hmm. with with those kind of teams because. There's, there's, well, some people popping off, and then, and then it, it's just more of an odd moment. I've yeah. seen Ant quite a bit. I'm, well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking we could get Wi-Fi. He, he seemed to be that third man, but this last game he really popped off. You know, we don't, we didn't really, really see much of them in the in the series. But that, that's what I'm thinking. Honestly, we might as well spin a wheel because they, they've all performed greatly today. We might as well spin a wheel, have it randomly decided. <laughs> well. You know what? Maybe, maybe we should just give in to chat, get Purcells in here. Um, You're right. Uh, um, um, give in to to whatever Twitch chat wants. That's what you always do. You you try and fight it. You try and go against it. You try and be original. But then it, at some point, you're nah. just kind of like... Oh, you know, you know what? We'll, we'll have Purcells, I guess. He, he's yes. decent as well. <laughs> oh, boy. Here comes the spam for Purcells. Well... They'll be happy once we get them in here, but until then, I mean, it, it was a really good performance from Johnson and Wales. You know, I mean, I, like I said, I didn't expect them to win game four just because of those inconsistencies, but Dartmouth had a lot of slip ups that were taken advantage of and great passing connections, though, from Johnson and Wales, both from the defensive side, being able to look for players, especially at this level. That doesn't happen too often at a time. But once they warmed up and once they started feeling themselves, they could find creative ways to get out of situations and creative ways to put themselves into offensive, creative situations. So a lot of good work done there from Johnson and Wales. And I believe we are ready for a player interview here. My webcam might have just frozen I don't know where this is coming from. <laughs> yes, I've got sir. a FaceTime yeah. call as we get a. I don't know what's going on. Oh, impressive. <laughs> impressive. My cam is still working. Look at this man to my other side. I hope I'm pointing the right side. Otherwise, you know, oh, I'm pointing the wrong side. Uh, but anyway, hello, Purcells. How's it going? We're doing good. How are you? <laughs> we're doing absolutely man? lovely as well oh my word so obviously you you've just finished this match up match up three to one when it when it was one or when they when they won that second game how did how did you guys feel about that uh so the way we felt is like okay let's collect ourselves and just find each other and try to cut the ball with purpose and try to be the second man because usually in that game we're not being the second man game that shot off and we're like not challenging as what we're supposed to, but uh, I think the two games uh, cleaned it up very well. And did you guys kind of feel as if you were supposed to be winning after that second game, or 
Or did you think you had a tough matchup still? Uh. Uh, we thought that we were getting the second game, yes, but it was, they were really tough in the second game. They they were astounding. But then, uh, as we recovered and kept on going, keeping going at it, and just recovering ourselves, we, we were a, a, li a livid, I would say. Fair enough. And Grant, you, you've surely got some questions as well here. I mean, not really, because ironically, Purcell's kind of answered the main question I had was, you know, how, how did you start finding each other? What did you notice in Dartmouth's defenses as you progressed throughout the game? Once you guys started to feel yourself, how to warm up, how did you create that game plan? What was it like going into that game for, I guess? So uh, as the third game came out, we started going for demos and they started to really mm -hmm. panic when they were started de we started demoing. And... I saw that their key player, uh, I saw the key player, he was really, really decent. And I started like going for demos, going demos on the like, goal line. And it started to turn out very well for us. And we started going for more shots than them, which really created more challenges, uh, more chances for us to score. That's great to hear because that's exactly what we were talking about and speculating early on in the series. We're glad you guys were able to pull that together. But I fear if you've got nothing else, that concludes everything that I've got for personals here. Uh, no yeah. worries, man. That is all good. Thank you for hopping in here, Persons. Appreciated a lot of you hopping in here and uh, and having a little chat to us. Congratulations on your win. Go and celebrate with your team. Obviously, a great first week for you guys, and um, hopefully, we will talk to you after another win at some point as well. Yes, of course. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Uh, thank you guys for voting me for being uh, <laughs> to the interview. <laughs> really appreciated. <laughs> Always love Twitch chat. Always love Twitch chat. Yeah, I really do. Have a, have a good one, man. You too. So well, that, that does conclude the interview. And before we head on to it a little break, obviously the production quality and everything, apart from the, the mistakes that did happen, but we, we'll, we'll forget about that. But apart from that, the production quality has been absolutely phenomenal. And there's only one real way that we can make such a high level production happen and that is with the sponsors and we, we would like to massively thank our sponsors once again meta meta pro gaming is a full service esports management developmental and consulting company meta provides esports coaching college esports management arena design and equipment so go ahead and visit them at metaprogaming.gg to learn more obviously while you're gaming, you need to be able to sit down. You need to be able to have a relaxing and comfortable seating position. That is where Respawn comes in. Respawn products are for, for all day comfort for content creators, professional and casual players, or anyone looking to upgrade their setup. Respawn has been battle test tested. I don't know whether they shot at it, but it has been battle tested. Maybe they've been using a tank and achieves a level of comfort that leaves your competitive in the dust. And that is, that is something that we literally mean. You feel as if you're sitting on the ground. Respawn, great products. So live to play another day with Respawn on your battle battle ready partner how are you going to hear demos coming in right when you don't have phenomenal headsets to hear them coming in hyper x they make phenomenal headsets and their mission has been to develop gaming products for all types of gamers high speed memory solid state drives headsets keyboard mice how many pc accessories do i need to name for console players usb flash drives mouse pads to the gaming community community and beyond hyperx gear is to choice of celebrity ambassadors pro gamers tech enthusiasts i've also got a hyper x headset because obviously i am a pro gamer and overclockers worldwide because it meets the most stringent product specifications and is built with the best in-class components now obviously it needs a place where you can actually play the game Helix Esports offers world-class gaming and virtual reality experience at state-of-the-art esports centers throughout the United States. So you can go everywhere. Helix will be there. Not in a creepy way, but they deliver a professional esports experience to everyone. Whether gamers choose to play, practice, and socialize with friends or compete at the highest level, Helix Esports is the premier destination for gamers. Follow e e Helix Esports today at Helix Esports USA. Now, 
Obviously, you're watching you're watching this on Twitch right now. You're you're watching this here. Another great place to watch esports is ESTV. They're the first ever de dedicated channel for esports and gaming personalities. The first channel devoted 24/7 esports coverage can be found on a number of OTT platforms. So if you're ever having that rough night where you just can't get to sleep, ESTV will be there, including the Roku channel, Amazon Fire TV, Samsung TV Plus, and even the Plus in there, Sling TV, and Vizio Free Watch. ESTV partners with the world's top gaming <laughs> networks and production partners for the most robust esports experience lineup on linear, online, and mobile. For more information, please visit their website www.estv.co. And that is now enough for this ad roll. That is not really an ad roll. It's just me rambling on. And with that, we will also send you guys into the break. Grant, I'm not too sure whether you're on the next one as well. Let's hope you uh, are. We are. <laughs> you I'll, tell are. You what, I'll tell you what. I wasn't here for like the last two minutes. Is cracking up. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, our broadcaster Caleb just started dying laughing, and then it just sent me off on my own little thing, and I was just, I was gone. I was dead. But uh, <laughs> the stream's not gonna be dead. I can tell you that much because, like you said, we do have another series. And joining me for the first time in way too long is going to be none other what i i heard a thing nail had yeah i i knew that my broadcaster's trying to throw curveballs at me and they're working i'm getting a, <laughs> i'm getting sad so i'm gonna back away now but not talk too far to reveal that i'm a fraud wearing sweatpants we'll see you in the next series here on necc <laughs>